All right, well, welcome to a very scary Halloween edition of One Million Cops, <laughs> where we will bring you frighteningly good entrepreneurs and keep you at the edge of your seat with millions of cups of coffee. All right, enough bad Halloween puns. Um, let's see, who's here for the first time? Oh, a few of you, a few of you. Maybe not quite as many as normal, but a few. Well, welcome to One Million Cups, uh, where every week we bring you two, count them, two fresh-faced entrepreneurs from here in the Kansas City area. We have, uh, give them two 25-minute segments. They get six minutes to talk. You guys get to ask them questions, and they get to answer them for about 20 minutes afterwards. So six minutes plus 20 minutes Q&A. As you're listening, be sure to think of good questions. Uh, let's see, what else do we normally say here in the morning? We thank the Kauffman Foundation for giving them this great facility. Please be kind to the Kauffman folks and uh, pick up your coffee cups and any other uh, you know, personal items you may leave around. And uh, what, what, what? Social. Uh. Tweet at One Million Cups KC. Okay, George says tweet at One Million Cups KC. Because we're not just One Million Cups, we're One Million Cups KC. Nate will tell you why later. We'll leave you in, at the edge of your seat thinking about that. All right, so enough of my yakking. It's time to get up an entrepreneur. Since you know we're talking about Halloween, what's something that's very, very scary? That's right, it's a wedding. <laughs> so our first guest makes, takes some of the terror out of weddings and makes them much easier. Please welcome my friend Catherine Hogan with Vow Exchange. Good morning, everyone. Thank you again, One Million Cups, for inviting me to speak today. So the Vow Exchange. Um, one of the challenges I have with the Vow Exchange is actually explaining what is the Vow Exchange. And the Vow Exchange is a business that um, is an option for couples who are looking to get married uh, somewhere in between a courthouse wedding and a big pull-your-hair-out scary Halloween wedding. So. Um, uh, modeled after the Las Vegas, uh, the iconic Las Vegas wedding chapel. My husband and I actually celebrated 10 year, our 10th wedding anniversary last year, and um, we decided we wanted to renew our vows. And in the research of this process, um, finding the right chapel to, you know, get married through, uh, discovered that this was actually kind of a brilliant model. Um, it was really easy, really inexpensive, um, realized that there was a, a lot to learn from this model, as well as a lot of improvements. So, um, Vegas weddings, this is typically what you think of when you think of a Vegas wedding. You know, something over the top, um, flowers, lack of imagination, it's your standard issue, red roses. Um, mini Elvis might marry you if you really want him to. So I thought, um, you know, there's room for improvement here. So if we take the model of um, packaging those weddings, but creating them in a way that's elevated, um, styled the way that weddings are styled today um, in a more modern uh, market for what couples are looking for, that you could actually have something really, um, really awesome. So I set out to put this together and started with the, I call it the salon. So in Vegas, it's the chapel, but when you say chapel in Kansas City, it kind of denotes a business that is you know, religiously based or spiritually based. Um, people who are getting married at the Vow Exchange um, probably aren't getting married in a church, because if they were, they'd be getting married at their own church. So this space needed to be something that was um, kind of secular, um, just very cozy, very comfortable, um, and also very personal. So to find the right home for the Vow Exchange, I went to the most awesome place in Kansas City. Of course, there's a lot of awesome places in Kansas City. The City Ice Arts Center, which I know is, um, has a few alum who have spoken here before. And uh, they just happened to have the perfect space that had the, kind of the right symmetry. It was cozy and quaint, and it needed a little elbow grease. So uh, together with my trusted best friend, husband, uh, we put it together to create a space that was actually the vision of what I thought couples are looking for for weddings. So completely Pinterest worthy. I am a Pinterest whore, I admit it, it was great. <laughs> so um, put it together with the right seating, um, added those little details that make it feel personal. A lot of those chapels feel very impersonal, very cold. This one 
Um, I give away those little flags so that the guests can wave it for the couple when they, um, at the end of their wedding. Um, I serve beverages to the guests, you know, while they're waiting for their event. So it all comes together really nicely. Um, but the coolest part about the Vow Exchange isn't just the space, it's that it's a one-stop shop for a wedding. So like a miniature little wedding. So um, when you get married, you need an efficient, you need photography, you need flowers. And again, we're talking just a ceremony, not necessarily re the reception. So starting with efficient, um, I was looking for, and actually, um, having been um, remarried in Vegas, the efficient that remarried us was actually very cool. He um, actually married Angelina Jolie and uh, Billy Bob Thornton. Is that right, Mel? Yeah. So it's very cool, but um, our efficients don't marry celebrities unless you know they live here in Kansas City. Um, but they're flexible. They come from a, um, a varied background. They uh, will marry couples from lots of different backgrounds, whether it's a civil ceremony or religious ceremonies, whatever they're looking for. Photographers um, looking for photographers who carry more of a modern aesthetic. So they know, you know, they have good composition, good eye for light, really good at capturing emotion. Um, which is what you want in a wedding photographer, and that they're willing to shoot one-hour gigs. Usually when you um, shoot a wedding, it's an eight-hour ordeal. Uh, florists, again, using farm-fresh flowers right here in Kansas City. Um, these bouquets are beautiful, and the couple gets the, or actually the bride gets the option to um, have her bouquet styled in a more like, you know, tussle textured or something a little bit more tailored. So that's, the, those are her choices instead of red or white roses. So, a little boring. Um, and then you have the little extras that, again, make it a more personal experience. It's a beverage for the guests. I put a something blue vintage handkerchief with every bouquet um, and those little expression flags that I showed you earlier. So you put all that together and you get five package options that give couples a range of flexibility, whether they want just the space and they got a cousin who can marry them or a brother who does, knows his way around the camera, they can do that or they can get the whole thing um, anywhere between $200 and $1,000. That is an incredible improvement from the industry standard of $25,000. So, yay, yay. <laughs> so when you add it all together, you've got you know, a really great location, you get really great service providers like florists and photographers, really awesome couples who, by the way, are not bridezilla, they are awesome, they are so cool and so gracious. And you get a really happy wedding, so um, and a really affordable wedding and a really charming wedding. So um, now the best part about this is it's totally scalable. So I think pretty, where, pretty much anywhere that you have couples who have no money, which is pretty much everywhere, um, couples who um, are getting married for the second time, couples who are getting married older, these are all people who don't want that big wedding. They feel silly being on display. Um, there's actually a lot, a lot of um, really um, capable couples out there who are looking for this service. So I think that um, we want to take this outside of Kansas City, but we're going to grow it here first. So, thank you very much. Great stuff. All right. Questions? Bookings? Yeah. I got lots of bookings. <laughs> Who's got a question? It's best by appointment. Um, we don't do it like right then and there. I mean, Vegas, I, you know, that's kind of the, the stereotype that you can kind of just walk in and get married at that moment. Um, no, it would be, you would set a date just like you would schedule your wedding. Um, and then I, set, I take appointments for couples who want to come in and see the space and answer their questions. And then we get them on the calendar. And we can book weddings anywhere in between. Like the earliest booking time, where, if they want flowers included, is two weeks. Um, but they could get married next weekend if they just wanted an efficient in the space or what, you know, like, and I have availability, so they could, you know, anywhere in between. Yes? Um, as far as how many weddings I can do in a weekend? Oh, how many people did, yes, the, the space is very quaint, very cozy. Can you, you re-ask the question? Oh, he wanted to know how, how many people does the, uh, the salon hold. Um, it holds 20 people with room to expand to an additional eight extra chairs. So again, these are very intimate, very small, very personal weddings. Couples are inviting their immediate families and their like best of bestest friends. So, you know, that's the kind of wedding we all want. We don't want Aunt Edna, who we haven't seen in like 50 years. But anyway. Question over here on your left, Hurst. Um, how much can you custom? Oh, sorry. sorry about that. How much can you customize? Or are all the colors and everything what you already have set up? 
Uh, as far as decor, yes. um, I, I discourage additional decor. The events at the Vow Exchange are only about an hour long, so there isn't a whole lot of time to go in and decorate and undecorate. Um, the only thing I do allow couples to um, personalize is uh, what I call a leg I have what I call a legacy table, and there are photos from four generations of weddings in my family, and it's really there just to kind of like you know as an homage to the institution of love and marriage. But um, I take those photos down and invite the couples to put their own up there to feel more personal for them. But other than that, it's um, I change the flowers out for the season usually. Um, so right now it's kind of the fall look. Um, for you know winter, I'll switch it over. So that's kind of how I, how I kind of switch up the decor a little bit. Thank you. Uh -huh. yeah, can you no can you describe your marketing? Uh, how you plan to get the word out about? I'm over. Oh, sorry. Yes, there you are. Can you explain how you plan to get the word out? What what's your marketing strategy on it? And then second, have you run across any confusion in the name, with more of maybe reselling dresses and oh. things? <laughs> Um, actually, remarkably, not too much confusion. People seem to um, get the concept pretty quickly, and they're usually like, wow, that's amazing. Um, I, I can't believe I hadn't thought of that. It's actually a, a response I get pretty often. As far as marketing, that is a really interesting nut to crack, because there really isn't an industry for couples who are getting married this way. Um, all of the traditional marketing tools are geared towards that big box wedding who, you know, the bridal fair. You know, nobody who's going to otherwise elope is going to go to a bridal fair. They're not going to subscribe to a bridal magazine. They're not looking for vendors to hold like a 200 person reception necessarily. So um, I actually did just um, register on a wedding, on wedding wire, which is a a vendor website, and I've listed myself as an efficient under the logic that couples who are wanting to get married in a real bare bones way will want to look for an efficient first, right? Because they don't need all that other stuff. They just need somebody to marry them. And so, so far, it seems to be bringing me a, d a decent amount of um, inquiries. But it's definitely a challenge I'm still figuring out. <laughs> So I have a question back here yeah. in the back. Um, you told a really good story about you getting married in Vegas and kind of how the dream started there. <laughs> what about you made you decide, I'm going to start a business after this and pursue it myself? That's a good question. Actually, um, I've kind of always, I'm kind of a serial entrepreneur. This is technically my second wedding business. I uh, started a wedding invitation business uh, about 10 years ago and then um, switched over to Hallmark and I had to let that go. But um, I think for me, weddings in particular are important to me for very personal reasons. Um, we're going to get into it. Um, in my family, I'm adopted, and I kind of feel like my parents sort of married me when I was born. Like, they, they said, for the rest of your life, I got your back. And so I think that's why marriage inspires me, because that's what people say when they get married. Like, hey, for the rest of my life, I got your back. So that's why this particular business was just personally important to me. So, All right, I'm going to ask our official name consultant what she thinks. <laughs> it's a good name. Oh, thank you. I have a different kind of question. Sure. I think it's too easy to get married in America, and half of all marriages end in divorce. So, have you thought about maybe a combo package, the unexchange? <laughs> and also get a talk bit of about that. gay weddings. Yes, I do get a little bit of that. Um, no, uh, a little bit. To be honest, I think that what a lot of people get into with weddings is I think they kind of get into it for the big party, the big show, and I think sometimes they're more about the wedding than they are really about their marriage. This is really about the vows, which is why I named it the Vow Exchange. It's about keeping it honest, keeping it true to what the couple is about. Um, and yes, we do support um, civil union ceremonies. Obviously, they're not legal here in Kansas City or in Missouri. Um, maybe one day they will be, uh, but we definitely want to honor the you know, love and commitment of any relationship. So I have a question over here on your left. Yes. And it was some people talking over here. So you, you mentioned the fact that you could scale into other cities. Have you thought about, I don't know, remind me again how long you've been, this, this location has been in place. Yeah. And then what does it look like to scale? Do you do, think about franchises? Do you think about uh, just going and finding these locations? It seems like it would be fairly easy to set up, yeah. well, maybe a little more difficult to run. Right, I'm still kind of figuring that out. The Vow Exchange is very new. It just opened in May, so like just barely six months old. Um, I think once I kind of get the systems figure out here in Kansas City, kind of get something that's really um, turnkey, then I'll be, it'll be a little easier to visualize how I was, will scale it and whether I will franchise it or whether I'll just 
run other locations and hire people to run it for me. So um, still, still to be determined. And another question here. Sure. Yeah, hi, um, I like the idea a lot. My wife and I got married and we did not want to go crazy. Um, however, we wanted to get married outside. So have you considered like the option of the food truck method of <laughs> marriage uh, where you, you know, I want, I do want the Corinthian uh, pillars and I do want this, but can you drag it out to this field somewhere? No, um, I haven't quite gotten to that point yet. You know, um, one of, another vision I did have for the Vow Exchange was to have, um, oftentimes in Vegas, some of the wedding chapels have multiple salons within or multiple chapels within that one location. And often there's like a gazebo or a garden or something in that location. Um, someday it might be really great to have a space where there, are, um, where I have an indoor, an outdoor, maybe even a drive-through window. I mean, I, I, I think it's so charming, <laughs> personally speaking. I know people think it's like a disgrace to marriage, but again, it's, it's just, you know, that couple is like taking a gamble in life. So, you know, I think that um, maybe in the future I might uh, expand and have a space where I can do a little bit of both. I have a question for you in the middle here. Hi, thank you. I think uh, got a great business. It's the uh, the package prices are they uh, all inclusive with the photo photographer and floral, mm -hmm. the ones that you listed? Yes, they are. Yes. So so the very base package is the two hundred dollar package. That one is really just the space. And again, that's if you have somebody to do everything. You know, you have somebody who knows how to marry you or is ordained to do so. Somebody who knows how to do a camera. You're going to bring your own flowers. Whatever you can do that. Um, the second one up is a $400 package, and I call that one the official, and that one is exactly what it is. It makes it official. So you get the use of the space, and you get uh, the efficient to marry you. Um, the, um, the next three packages, which are 600 800 and 1000 all um, offer a combination of photography and flowers. So um, it's just basically um, the smaller package just offers photos of just the ceremony, the middle one offers photos of the ceremony plus, like, I call it the wedding your mother would approve of because you get the portraits to put on the mantle, you know, um, of the family and the bridal party. And then the, the highest package offers, like, a couples-only photo session, which couples really like to do. You know, they have lots of great pictures of just the two of them. So that's kind of how I tear it. Um, and the flowers, basically, your arrangement gets bigger as you go up in packages. Question here on your back left. Yes. So I was looking at your website and wondering, you know, are small intimate weddings something that's less concentrated on the weekends than big large weddings which seem to be only on the weekends and your reservation page suggests that you focus on the weekends. So my question is, have you given much consideration as to how you might be able to diversify your, your business in a way that allows you to um, amortize the, the, the um, fixed costs of your facility uh, for the other five days of the week? Well, um, I think it works for Vegas to do five days or seven days a week, um, as it were over there. Um, Vegas is definitely like a vacation destination. You have people come in all days of the week, and I think that they have the capacity to do that. Um, you know, here at home, um, I think families are still kind of focused on the weekends. People are still coming in from out of town um, for these smaller weddings. Um, they still want to go out for a night, uh, like a really nice dinner, a night of dancing. It's harder to do sometimes. Um, um, during the weekday. So at this point, you know, if I become really, really booked up on my weekends, I might open up weekdays if it shows, like, you know, the word's out there and people are really loving it and there's just not enough time in the weekend. But it, right now, I don't know that it's a priority for us. Question for you right over here. No, nope, the other here. Yes. <laughs> I can see the need for the small space for the wedding, but then you have to bring in multiple family groups for the reception. Do you coordinate with any other venues near you to hold the larger receptions? So um, I focus mainly on the ceremony. Um, as far as uh, receptions, usually the way it works is I, I have couples who are kind of in two different camps. Um, one where they really, this is the only wedding they're having, and they just go out for a nice private dinner with their family, and it's really awesome. Um, we do have a lot of couples who are getting married just with the family. They still go out for that nice dinner right afterwards, and then usually the next evening they have a bigger reception. Um, as far as the bigger receptions, I'm not so much in that business. Um, I, I am working on what I call a concierge service for couples who are wanting to 
recommendation on what to do afterwards. Um, some people just aren't as familiar with the great restaurants we have down there in the crossroads. You know, I, I love to send people to Tannen, Anton's, The Rieger. I mean, some of those really locally owned uh, restaurants that have private dining options and just would make really good, you know, places to celebrate. So um, I might work with those businesses to see if they're interested to kind of combine a little package for them, whether they can give a happy hour special or a free dessert to the couple or, you know, something to kind of, you know, swing some business their way as well. Question right here. Yeah. Just following up on the uh, previous question about the space in the other five days of the week is the people that do get the justice of the peace of the courthouse wedding, they still going to have, um, you know, engagement photos or maybe they want to, you know, hey, we got married at the justice of the peace, but we'd like to have a formal wedding photo. So you, that might be a possible solution for your space. Um, oh, I hadn't really thought of that. That might be, you know, I, I would definitely be open to that um, if a couple wanted to do that. Um, I'd have to think about that, but that isn't something I hadn't had really thought about um, as far as court, folks who have already gotten married at a courthouse and are looking for a, a place for photos. Yeah, they could do that. A question here in the back? That back, okay, yeah. Purely hypothetically speaking, let's say you have a spouse that would never think of doing something like this uh -huh. and a spouse that would think this is really awesome. Have you worked with a duo like that? Um, no, to be honest, mostly they're kind of both on board with it, you know. Um, and where they don't compromise, where like um, you might have one where the family's really big and they're like, I can't not invite Aunt Edna, you know, whatever. Um, they usually compromise by having the big reception the next day. So, um, so far, the couples have all been pretty much, we love it, we're on board, let's do it. All right, before, uh, before I ask our traditional last question, I do want to point out we have some special guests today. So our, our metro area mayors are all hanging out with you. So mayors, if you want to identify yourself, give a wave. <laughs> and I just wanted to point that out because, you know, you've got a whole pool of potential efficients right there. <laughs> hey, I hadn't thought oh, about wait. that. <laughs> Uh, Clint Zweifel is also here. Oh. There he is. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Catherine, we always ask, what can we as a community do for you to help the Vow Exchange grow and, and you know, put Vegas in their place? That's a good question. Um, I would say, you know, get the word out, marketing. Again, like I said, mentioned earlier, there isn't, um, there isn't a market for this. And there might be some opportunities for there to be other, you know, uh, businesses around these, you know, smaller weddings. Um, I don't know if there's, you know, maybe there needs to be a directory for small weddings, a blog for small weddings. I would love to take on all of that, but right now I got my hands full with this. So if anybody out there is, you know, kind of curious or interested in weddings, that might be something to do, um, to partner up with. So I'd be interested to talk about that. Very good. And you'll be uh, registering people right over here afterward? Sure. Yeah, right. yeah let's do it. Thank I you very much. I do too. So. <laughs> Thank you. Great, John. OK, so during the halftime here, we always take the opportunity to make a few announcements about what's going on in the community. But we're really more excited about um, what's going on with One Million Cups. So everybody that's standing back, back along the back wall, there's tons of seats up here. Come fill them in, please. Don't feel awkward. Just kind of come on in and uh, fill up the space. And then we'll have Nate come up and give a, an update to where One Million Cups is at. All right. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Today is a really exciting milestone for One Million Cups. So we started One Million Cups 18 months ago in Kansas City, 12 people in a room, and just a simple idea of how we could engage entrepreneurs in our own community. Okay. Well, about, about 12 months ago, actually, we started thinking, could we do One Million Cups in other communities? And is there value in doing that? And so we started um, last October. I don't know if any of you guys were here, but I handed off the Kansas City leadership from uh, me planning everything to actually the entrepreneurs owning it, and that started our new model. So now One Million Cups is run by entrepreneurs, for entrepreneurs, they're all volunteers. So give them a huge round of applause. Give them a, they're amazing to work with. You guys have 
no idea. They make it look easy, but there's a lot of work that goes into this. And uh, so we started scaling, and our second location last November uh, was Des Moines, Iowa. So we, we launched with uh, one entrepreneur up there who's grown a team, and now they have about 60 people a week meeting in a coffee shop, and they've had uh, tons of entrepreneurs go through. But then we, we were in two cities in January, and my goal was to get to 20 cities by the end of the year. And um, the only way we could do that is by building the tools and resources and empowering the entrepreneurs all across the country. Well, we launched our 18th, 19th, and 20th cities today. So One Million Cups, Tulsa, Oklahoma, uh, Omaha, Nebraska, and Peoria, Illinois. Um, this morning, we'll have 37 entrepreneurs presenting all across the country and about 1,200 people attending. So um, this is a huge day for us. Uh, we're only going um, to grow larger, but we want to keep the quality here, and we want to keep the family feel and the discussion going. So we're going to be scaling, but be, uh, we're going to be really intentional about how we move uh, forward in the next year. So anyway, I just want to give you an update, an announcement. Um, We're, we're humbled to do the work that we do, and we really appreciate that you guys come and support us and that you are supporting the entrepreneurs by coming. So thank you so much. So what you guys don't know is that, um, <clears throat> I don't know if anybody realized that Nate went completely dark over the summer, at least for Kansas City, because he was literally at most of these cities helping them launch and, and supporting them and encouraging them and, yeah. and saying, hey, you're taking a huge risk, but we think this can be an awesome thing. And uh, kudos to Nate. I want to give him a round of applause because he's just yeah. killed it <laughs> getting him out there. <laughs> and that was a big goal, 20 cities. I remember when you came to me and you said, dude, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I can do 20 cities. And now we're like, yeah, 40, why not, you know, I don't know. So, okay, a couple other announcements uh, this morning. Let's have Katie from Volunteer Mark come on. Hi, my name is Katie Martino, and I work at Volunteer Mark. And we actually got to present <clears throat> last month at One Million Cups. We have a volunteer management software. And I just wanted to let you know about an event that we have coming up this weekend, actually. It's a charity chili cook-off to celebrate the launch of our um, product. And so it's at Hope Faith Ministries, and it's from 3.30 to 5.30. Um, I set these out in the lobby. They're little flyers, and they have QR codes on them. So if you have a QR reader on your phone or a QR app, then you can just scan this. It'll take you straight to our Facebook page, and you can get all the event details there. Thank you. One thing that we really like to do is support the, <clears throat> the alumni of uh, One Million Cups, and so it's great to encourage people when they're doing events like that. Uh, Kate uh, from Arts KC. Hi, I'm with Arts KC. I'm the Arts KC Fund Director, and um, for those of you who don't know, that's the grant-making fund for our regional arts council that raises money every year to give away to artists and arts organizations. And while there are some cities like Milwaukee that give away $10 million a year, we're new, and so we raise a lot less money. And we're eager to expand our campaign beyond just workplace giving out into the community, and um, kind of an Obama model of just small amounts of money if we all support it at the same time. So Friday night, we're doing an event. It's called Plate to Palette. And um, around on chairs, you can see, if you text Arts KC to the number on these pages, and they're on tables, um, you purchase a $10 button. That button is going to qualify you for specials that are really great, not sort of puny, um, at restaurants around town and also for a scavenger hunt that we're doing through the crossroads. So some of the specials at scavenger hunt locations, you don't have to play if you don't want to, um, are like 50% off Nutcracker tickets if you go in with a button and buy it at the Bullender Center on Friday night. So I would love for um, you guys to participate. It's a small investment in the artists and um, small entrepreneurs in the artistic community. Thank you. Do we have Foster with the SPN? Oh, Foster, dude, I didn't see you there. Hey, uh, so how many of you want to get more students involved in this community? The mayors do, that's good. 
Uh, and how many of you are looking to hire some interns now or in the future? Okay, great. Um, so now's your chance. On Friday, November 15th, we are hosting the very first student startup job crawl in Kansas City. This is put on by the KU School of Business and Silicon Prairie News. Um, so what we're doing is we're going to be um, bringing 52 or a busload of uh, the very best students from KU from all different backgrounds, engineering, business, uh, graphic design, as well as students from surrounding universities to tour Kansas City and connect with you guys. Uh, so we're going to be touring the Kansas City Startup Village, uh, attending a demo day at Betablocks. We're going to have a job fair here at Coffin Labs. And then we're going to finish up with uh, another job fair at Think Big Partners. Uh, so if you're looking to uh, connect with students or hire interns, and you're not at uh, KCSV, uh, beta blocks or think big, then you'll be here from 1 o'clock to 2.15. You can sign up on siliconprairienews.com. <clears throat> uh, there's an article, um, it's titled something like the job crawl returns to Omaha, uh, Iowa, and KC. Uh, but this is the first in Kansas City, so it's going to be a big event, and I think it's going to really connect uh, the students to this community. Um, so talk to me, um, or maybe we'll tweet out a link later. So thank you. Okay. So we've got a couple more here. We're going to roll through real quick. Uh, Rick with Connecting for Good. Update real quick. Good morning. Hey, that was awesome. <laughs> so we're, you all know that we're doing a computer drive trying to get computers donated to us so that we can send them back out to low-income communities. This weekend, we're going to be here in the parking lot Saturday from 9, to, from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., and you should have a card like this out on your chairs. Uh, if not, we'll have some more in the back. You can stop by and talk to us, uh, find out what it's all about. Uh, but we really need your help, bring, A, bring in computers, and two, getting the word out. We really need, we're, we're trying to raise 5,000 desktops in the next four weeks, so we need a lot of help. Thanks. Okay, and then Monica from Harvest. Hi there, good morning. Uh, my name is Monica Dahl and I'm with Arvest Bank and I was uh, coming this morning to talk to you guys about a business education series that we're doing in combination with the Kaufman Fast Track. We're hosting it here tomorrow, excuse me, sponsoring it here tomorrow, um, October 31st. It's gonna be a free series. It's gonna be four classes, one a week for the next four weeks. Um, there's flyers that are gonna be on the table back here. It's catered to small businesses in each life cycle. So tomorrow's is going to be a panel style class that's made up um, for for businesses in the startup phase. So it's gonna have uh, Alana Mueller is gonna be talking about the Fast Track program as well as her networking. It's gonna have a CPA, a marketing expert, a banker, um, as well as, um, I'm drawing a blank. So, but it's gonna be a fantastic series. We're gonna have, um, the second series is gonna be dedicated to businesses in the growth cycle. So any businesses that are two years and up and are starting to really take off, it's gonna talk about technology, different options that are available, as well as education that's out there for you. The third session is gonna be for uh, lending, bank lending, as well as SBA lending. So completely educational on how to go about getting a loan and, and moving forward and what steps are involved. And the last uh, section or last class is gonna be for businesses that are mature and getting ready to um, exit the, the business and so exit strategy and excuse me retirement planning and and uh, all of that so again it's a free class series it starts at 7 30 tomorrow's the first one it goes till 10 o'clock in the morning um, and then there's flyers in the back thank you very much okay so thank you for uh, le letting our announcements take place i know that we like to tell you what guys what's going on in the community um, but you're really here to listen to the entrepreneurs and i want to give one other shout out real quick um, that, to an alum uh, I don't know if they're here today, but we did. I just did see the last couple of days that um, SOC 101 got their Kickstarter fully funded at, I think, 30, they're going for 30,000, something like that. It's lots of money. And we're really excited for them. They were one of the uh, kind of uh, early presenters, and we're super excited for their success. So kudos to those guys. So next up, um, we definitely live in a town where we've seen greeting cards and we've seen different gifts that you can give to your friends and family. But I really think this is going to change um, the way that we can uh, create a lot of those assets and share them with our friends and family. So I want to uh, welcome up Jennifer Nichols with Hulu. Warm welcome. Good morning. I'm Jennifer, and this is my husband, Chris, and we're the team behind Hulu. What if you could take some of the best features of Photoshop 
and put it in a web app that makes it easy for everyone to create great designs. That's why we developed Hubaloo, an online graphic design platform that makes it easy to create and send printed and digital cards, invitations, and announcements. When we were little, we only needed our imagination, scissors, and glue, and we could make mom a meaningful Mother's Day card or send grandma a one-of-a-kind holiday card. But as we grow up, sentiment is pushed aside in favor of mass-produced greetings and pre-designed templates. And up till now, technology has focused on pushing us through this process as fast as possible, further removing the thought from this altogether. Our goal is to use technology to enable everyone to design. Everything we've built into Hubaloo is to this end. Simple sliders to scale and rotate elements, changing background and colors with a single mouse click, a drag and drop layering system that makes it easy to move objects above and below one another. This allows you to focus on the meaning of your design instead of the process of making your design. We really wanted to break the mold with the level of customization you can achieve with our layout engine. One of the ways we're doing this is with Hubaloo's art elements. We're partnering with talented independent artists to curate a library of graphic elements. Every time their art is used, they receive a piece of the sale. So this allows us to offer art not commonly seen on most stationery. So you can make save the dates with mustaches and robots or go a more traditional route. The choice is yours. So before we give you a quick demonstration of Hublu, I wanted to tell you a little bit about our journey. 14 years ago, we got bit by the entrepreneurial bug and we started our web development firm. We started out building custom shopping cart systems for small businesses, and that quickly grew into inventory control systems and complete front and back end commerce solutions. We were the whole IT department for most clients, handling everything from the development to the database architecture and sysadmin. We carved out a niche, creating APIs and user interfaces for template-based personalization. We weren't satisfied with the limitations of template-only systems, so we began dreaming about how we could completely deconstruct a card and put it back together piece by piece exactly the way we wanted. And so Hubulu was born. After building the beta, we knew we really needed an environment that would allow us to focus our time and energy on Hublu. So over the summer, we did something a little bit crazy. We moved our entire family from Los Angeles to the Kansas City area. And it's been a great fit for us. With things like being part of beta blocks and presenting with one million cups, we're really excited about being part of this amazing community. So let's go ahead and see exactly what we can create in Hublu and how it works. This is our site, and we offer several printed card options, but this morning, we're gonna create a free digital card for one million cups that says thank you. And we're gonna start by choosing our background, and we can choose from the color swatches or the color wheel, and then we're gonna start adding our art elements. We're gonna choose some white stripes, and then we can use our sliders to scale and rotate this object. And to be a little bit fancy, we're gonna duplicate that layer. And we're gonna rotate it the other way, and it's gonna create a plaid pattern. And so now we're ready to add some text. A simple thank you. And we hit apply to see the changes right on our card. And then we can choose our font and size it and rotate it and choose a color. And now we're gonna add another art element to our card a more traditional card element of a frame. And we're gonna make that a little bit bigger so we can put stuff on it. But as you can see, we covered up the thank you. But we can easily take that thank you layer, move it on top of the frame, and then our thank you's on top of it. And now we're going to put One Million Cups logo on this card. And we could use the photo controls, but we can also just take it from our desktop and slide it right over to the page, and it automatically uploads. And then we click it, and it's on our card, and we can scale it and put it exactly where we want. And so now the front of our design is done. We're ready to flip to the back, and we have all the same controls for the back of the card with art, text, and photos. And so we're gonna just say that this is from us, 
And then we're gonna actually add our logo to the back of the card. And again, we can drag it and it will automatically upload. And then scale it. And now our card is ready to send. And we just enter our name and our email address. And then we enter the recipient's name and their email address, one million cups. And for our demonstration, we'll just use our email address again. And then we send it. And that's how easy it is. Thank you so much. Okay, I'm impressed. Um, <laughs> questions? Do you have an app version of this ready? We do not. That is one of the things that we um, want to focus on for, you know, in the near future. Um, and we've worked really hard to make the user interface for our web app really good. And so it's really important for us to do that with the mobile app. So some of the things that we've looked into is being able to have a user account where you can save your card design that you make on the web app, and then being able to use like a mobile or tablet to easily write a message on it. Um, so that's one of the things that we're thinking about. Okay, I was just wondering, because most people I know, they carry their devices around with them and laptops sometimes, major <laughs> work kind of thing. So next question in the middle here. Yeah. Why haven't you sold the Hallmark? <laughs> Well, we're fairly new. We actually just moved um, at the end of May and uh, are just trying to make some great connections in Kansas City before we just walk into them and like, <laughs> here's our product, buy it from us. Um, but yeah, we, we really want to make something really great um, and go to anybody that would be interested in it and say, you know, we have really great technology, we have a really great user interface. Um, and we have something that people really like to use and enables them to be great designers. Question here in the middle. How did you come up with the name? <laughs> so, um, I have three boys and um, they ask me questions in triplicate. I don't know if they plan it or not, but they always ask me, where are we going? What's for dinner? And they each come like within probably a half an hour of each other and ask me, so I came up with this word, hublu, to answer their questions because I got tired of it. And when we um, started to develop the, the interface for this, we thought we have something more than just an uh, invitation or card company. We have a, a system that can personalize anything um, and, and to actually design the personalization yourself. So we thought, hey, it's kind of more than an invitation, more than a card, so what do you call it? And so we just came up with Hublu. Wonderful. Another question in the middle. Yeah. Do you uh, have the opportunity then to like download this design and print it yourselves, or is it through your? You know, have you partnered with someone to you know print mm -hmm. uh, these different creations? Yeah. So we have a few different printed options. We have a, a six and a quarter by four and a six by four and a half, and then a five by seven, and then business card size and flyers. And then we have our printer in Texas that we work with to print it. Um, we are starting to offer a, like a greeting card, um, and we would love to find a local printer to do that piece with, just so we could speed up the process and send that out quickly. Question right here. Can you tell us a little bit about your revenue model? Um, yeah, so basically the revenue model is to is our printed cards. Um, and then we're also going to um, look at a subscription model for the digital cards probably at the beginning of this year. Um, we need to uh, kind of figure out the piece with the artists to give them a good piece of that subscription model as well. Um, and then we would also like to license our software to other companies. And we are actually talking with a company to personalize gifts using our system. Tracy has a question and maybe a comment. <laughs> so I'm in advertising and I don't just do names. Uh, it reads the, the, I like the name, but the graphics read like Wob to Lou. I would make the B a capital and the A is a goofy A uh, and I wouldn't make, and the yellow is too pale. Okay. 
that's some great feedback. <laughs> Next question in the middle here. Just a, a comment following your thing about licensing. Uh, I, I come here each week and I see opportunities for different local entrepreneurs to interact with each other. So within the last couple of weeks there was sports photos, another local Kansas City startup. Mm -hmm. And I can just see a great opportunity to take the sports photos mm -hmm. and make a plug-in or an API with your site that people can take those sports photos and directly bring them into Hubaloo cards. Mm -hmm. I think that sounds great. That's exactly why we made the system so that people aren't so limited by the art that other designers say is good, and also just the genre that people design for. So yes, yeah, sports is a great thing. I've got a question over here on your left. Um, so you, you, you just in passing kind of mentioned the relationship that you have with uh, doing curated artists on, on the, the site. How do you reach out to them? How do you found, uh, find them? I wanna put one other plug in there. There's a local company called Dimdeco. Um, who makes the uh, willow tree figurines here in Johnson County. Mm -hmm. And they do the same thing. They've, they've actually contracted artists around the world and then they give the license fees back to them, mm -hmm. but they've grown a multi-million dollar business off of doing that. So I just wanna highlight that a little bit and have you talk into that a little more. Yeah, so right now the way that we found our artists is just by word of mouth, by putting it out on Twitter and our Facebook page, just asking, you know, are you a visual artist? Would you like to earn some extra cash? Um, and that's mostly how we've gotten them. Um, but being new to the Kansas City area, it's a little bit difficult to kind of break into those circles of artists and, and be legitimate too and, and be like, hey, we're a real company that does stuff. Um, so that's definitely something that we're looking into of how to better strategize that and reach out to artists better. While he's making his way around, do you guys still work on the consulting side on the e-commerce business? Is that is it something where you're just still doing both? What's that journey look like? And, yeah. and talk a little bit more about um, with your old company, how big was your team? What was it like leaving that team or was it just you? What's yeah. that story look like? So basically Chris is most of the development side of, of Upside Down Design, which is our web development firm. And I did uh, front end design and usability and then some coding on the front end as well. Um, so how we've worked that out is that I've stopped taking any kind of clients and so my full-time job is to work on Hubaloo now. And then Chris, since everything's pretty much built, he's able to work on Hubaloo as a part-time business. Um, but yeah, we still do ha work for clients to pay our bills because we have to pay those still. Jennifer, question back here for you. Um, well, one thing, I can help you with the artist piece of that, hey. so we can talk after this. Um, <laughs> But, you know, I can speak from my small nonprofit. I think there's a really significant market there because we're either begging for a design assistance or yes. I'm, you know, blindly feeling my way through the back end of something. I mean, this would be, in my mind, huge um, for a lot of the, particularly the arts nonprofits that I'm familiar with. I, I think that's amazing. And that's kind of what we've, we've talked about a little bit of just being like, we know that nonprofits, their budgets are really tight. We would love for them to use this system as an invitation system as well to showcase their artists, showcase their events. Thank you. And, yeah. yeah, and just kind of be um, a great resource for them without them having to spend money and they get to put their money towards their good things that they're doing. Question back here in the back. Um, noticing that there's an email function for the designs, what would keep a user from emailing um, the design to, let's say, a Kinko's or a personal printer, um, as opposed to printing it through um, Hubaloo's print company? Yeah, so the way that the digital stuff works is that it is web resolution, so it's 72 DPI. So technically, you know, any image on the web can be a screencast and printed. It's just gonna be a really low quality. And um, you know, working with a, a printer that has good quality is something really important to us. So we think that you know, our product will speak to it for itself when they receive it. All right, folks, you have 10 minutes of questions to ask. <laughs> Don't make us break into our dance routine. There we go. Um, you may have already thought about this, and this is more of a suggestion, but there, I, I feel like there's a huge opportunity as just a graphics creator, just something, like if, if I could embed this in, in a tool mm -hmm. outside of cards or anything else and just create graphics mm -hmm. and then 
export a JPEG and use it in my tool, that would be yes. amazing. So. Yeah, so we're really excited about that as well. Um, like I said, our background is invitation and cards. We've done personalized engines for those for 10 years now. Um, so that was just a good place for us to start because we had those printer connections and, and knew how to do all that. But we really think that there's an opportunity, especially in this digital market, of doing things like Facebook cover photos or the Twitter header or just making some images for like your blog and different stuff like that. Next question in the middle. Uh, should you can, um, protect your name? It, you know, you got the website, so that's really good, but shouldn't yes. you put a registered trademark there? And We probably should. Yeah, and then when you do that, then you do it every time, or legally someone can take it. Well, I don't want there, that to happen. Yeah. <laughs> And there, I was the founding president of the Kansas City Arts Coalition, which at one point had a thousand members, and they do have a um, a registry of artists, and you can go down to the River Key at 201 Wyandotte and look through portfolios and find art styles that you like. Oh, cool. Um, and then, uh, what about the interface with like event management, like through Eventbrite? Can people could des design it here? but then use the event management software of eventbrite.com? I'm not too sure about that. I'm not familiar with Eventbrite and their kind of user interface. If they have a, a way to um, update like a JPEG photo in it, then yes, you could. Um, and we would just need to kind of make some different functionality in our, in our interface that instead of using the send now button, it would say create a JPEG and then you would create that JPEG and it would be downloaded to your computer and then you could upload that to Eventbrite. So if you want to have the app, Yes, that's exactly right. <laughs> Great, another question in the middle here. I love this concept mostly because I already use a similar program called Send Out Cards. I don't know if you're familiar with that, mm -hmm. but it's a subscription service and I would take a look at their model. Mm -hmm. uh, it's now sold like a pyramid, like a, like a Mary Kay or like a 31 or whatever, uh, but they have a good, uh, reasonably priced, I think, subscription model. And they also use um, upload from your contacts file that you can right. Um, get reminders of birthdays. Mm -hmm. So about a week before someone's birthday, I get a reminder and I can go in and create a card and send a hard copy card and mail it from that system. I never have to have touch it. I just pay the postage. And <laughs> right. The, um, so that's, that's just, a, if you guys are familiar with that, I would encourage to, to look at that. We are, um, and we've looked at it, and we, we really do like the subscription model for um, kind of a yearly fee to be able to send these cards. And you know we have a feature list that's very long, um, and that kind of goes through a process of what helps the end user the most. So definitely creating birthday reminders and stuff like that is at the top of the list. We actually have a lawyer friend that uh, really wants us to add that feature. So I think you know within the next month we'll kind of get with him and see how that works and uh, how to uh, put that on the site as best as possible. Question over here on your left. Well, I want to start by saying I, I like your logo. And I particularly like the coloring on your website. Thank you. Um, but I have a question about your, the printed product. Mm -hmm. uh, you haven't talked too much about that today. I was just curious about um, how you've positioned yourself in that market, how you see yourself in that arena, and how you came up with your pricing model for that. Mm -hmm. So we have several different types of cards. We have um, like a postcard and then business cards and flyers that we currently offer the site and we can always expand that product um, line as much as, as we want. Um, but we kind of looked at some of the competitors like Minted and Tiny Prints and kind of based our prices off of them. But one thing that we do do differently than them is that we offer low quantities on several or almost all of our printed products. They start at 10. They're a little bit pricier than when you get up to say 20 or 30. Um, but when we lived in LA, we had lots of feedback that said, when I go out on a job interview, I like to say that I'm a PA or that I'm a video you know, -ographer or different stuff like that. And I want my business cards to reflect that. And so if I print up 50, then I don't use all of those. 
So if we could have some way to just print up 10 and customize each of those 10 um, with you know, the right text and the right logo and all that stuff. Um, so that's kind of how we came up with a low quantity model as well. Um, but we think our prices are pretty competitive when it comes to the five by seven cards. They're 325 each for 20, so. Question for you back here. Uh, first off, I think you're like a brilliant concept and I want to welcome you to Kansas City and the Thank community. I think you're a great addition. My question is, for somebody who wants to support the local economy, how do I take what I get from your uh, front end and use a local printer to print it? Well, right now we don't have that, but we would like to look into doing that and, and probably not just in the Kansas City area because, um, you know, with printers, some of the, you know, there's a delay in the printing. Our printer, you need to get it to them by the next morning at 10, 10 a.m. and then they'll print it and ship it. But if it was a local process, then it would be a lot easier, a lot quicker. Um, and we really would love to look at local printers here in Kansas City and they kind of expand that out to the different cities and different areas because um, I think that would be a really great idea. One thing too we need is API capability with that printer because we've automated the back end. So we create a pre-pressed PDF and automatically ship that to the printer. So as long as a local printer had that capability, we could integrate pretty easily. Question right here. Hi, right, welcome to Kansas City. Um, and you move from LA to here. So on the website itself, is it, uh, I say, is it uh, able to turn in, uh, use it in different languages uh, besides English? Because you're using some kind of a technical capacity mm -hmm. that maybe uh, Latinos wouldn't quite readily pick up. Is that uh, something that you have on there right now or are considering? Uh, we do not have that on there right now, but it is definitely something that we would want to consider. Um, when we started talking about including artists onto our website, the cultural art thing was something that we kind of talked about of being really important to our site. Um, you know, most card companies just kind of go for whatever's the most popular with people. And we really want to get it specific to be like, hey, if you have a cultural event and you want to use art like that, then you should be able to come on our site and do that. So. I definitely think that languages would go along with that and uh, we'll add that to our features list. Okay, so we're out of time for questions, but as always, uh, I really love this product. It's really exciting that uh, you're, you've moved so far to come to Kansas City. Uh, we're so happy that you're here, but you. what can we as the Kansas City community and the surrounding area do to support you? Well, our first one is artists and I'm really happy that you know there already has been some connections with artists. I would love to talk to you guys and then more people. If you have artist friends, please send them our way because um, we really want to support them. Um, the second thing is, is that we are looking to put a kiosk system of this into different places where people wait. So things like coffee shops or libraries or car washes um, we think would be great for our product to kind of, you have some extra time, make a card for someone and make a great connection with them. So if that's something that you would be interested in, um, that would be great. We also do a revenue sharing model with that as well. And then I think the last card is, please go on our site, send a free digital card to someone. We would really appreciate it. Awesome, thank you guys so much. Well done. Thank you. Thank you Okay, so another week down. I appreciate you guys coming. One thing real quick, if, you're, if you are interested in presenting, make sure you go to onemillioncups.com and click down on Kansas City and then apply to present there. Um, also, if you're interested in um, helping out in any way, please let us know. We, we always love trying to connect people to other people in the room. Um, we'll see you next week, same time, same place. Thanks.